Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Colton. Today's video is all about creative spaces and maybe helping you to think about what creative spaces you could utilize to help impact your motivation and your creativity. So this obviously could be a studio space, it could be a spare bedroom, but it also could be a public space. You know, if you're a photographer who shoots baseball games, the baseball stadium might be your creative space. You know, this is a space that you would enter and the sights, the smells, the sounds put you into a more creative mindset and also help focus your attention on what you're doing. And obviously if you're shooting a baseball game, the baseball stadium's probably gonna do that for you. Um, but the, the space that you're in doesn't even have to be related to what you're doing. You know, maybe if you're someone who draws images of people, uh, you know, maybe a park could be a space for you. Even if the people you're drawing are not there in the park, they're up here in your head, uh, being in that park might serve as a creative space because it's away from the distractions of your home. You know, you don't have a TV there, you don't have your... Uh, you know, Xbox there. You don't have uh, maybe your partner who lives with you, right? You've entered a public space, but the noise of nature, the sounds of people going about their business sort of serve as white noise for you to push those distractions out and just focus on your illustration. So even though you're not drawing anything in the park, that park could be a creative space for you that feels good and enables you to be more creative. Um, so I really want you to think about what spaces you have access to in your life, especially if you're someone who maybe is limited on space, what spaces do you have access to that could serve as dedicated creative environments? Um, to that point, I wanna give an example of my own creative space, and it is not a perfect creative space, it is what I have available, and there are definitely some drawbacks to the space, but there are also some really great benefits to this space that I think outweigh any kind of negative. So I will share here uh, my own creative space, and as I do so, I would love for you all to share what spaces do you use in your own work to be creative, and I'd love to hear that, but I think also anyone who's kind of trying to think of that for themselves can read your comment as well and maybe help generate some ideas for their own venture into creativity. And one thing I do want to also warn about, or maybe not warn about, but throw a little caution to, is the idea of maximizing your creative space. It's not a bad thought at its core, but I, I think what often happens is when I hear, hear the word maximize, I start to think of corporate mindset capitalist mindset of, oh, we've got to maximize productivity. We've got to maximize efficiency. We've got to maximize creativity. And I think we can very easily get too into figuring out how to maximize creativity that we lose sight of actually being creative and doing something creative, right? I give you the example of, you know, maybe you have a desk and you're working at that desk and you really want to maximize your efficiency and you feel like, hey, if I could get this desk set up just right, I could be really, really efficient. Let me get rid of the clutter. You know, let me put a, a, some different items here that might help me be more efficient in what I'm doing, you know, better keyboard, whatever it may be. But then you get so consumed with trying to set up the most efficient desk possible that suddenly you realize, well, I haven't actually spent much time getting work done. And so I actually have not been very efficient. I've been spending a lot of time trying to become efficient, but I've actually been less productive, right? And, and maybe you get the desk set up just right and that solves all your problems, or maybe you never quite get the desk set up right and you're always trying to become more efficient and you, then you're kind of in that sort of loop. And I think the same can happen with creativity, we try to maximize creativity. We are human. There are gonna be times where we are really creative and there are gonna be times where other factors of life have us down a bit and we're not gonna be that creative. And one space is not going to change that element of human nature. So I think the, the goal is to find a space that you can be creative in. And if that allows you to be a little bit more creative, that's great, but let's not spend too much time trying to maximize creativity 
and, and really what that ends up being is maximizing output. I wanna produce more images. That might be good. You know, sometimes to be creative, we need to produce a lot of work so that we can maybe get some of the same old ideas out, maybe even get some of the bad ideas out, and then suddenly we get to an idea that we wouldn't have gotten to had we not taken any pictures at all, right? And so sometimes producing a lot of work can get us to something new. But other times producing a lot of work makes us think that we're being really creative when really all we're doing is creating variations on the same theme over and over and over and thinking, wow, look at all this work I'm doing. I must be really creative. Well, no, we're just producing the same stuff over and over. So sometimes not producing anything at all might be a sign that we're really reflecting, we're really thinking, we're really generating ideas, and we're about to have a really big breakthrough. So your output, especially in quantity, should not necessarily be your metric for how creative you are. Not producing anything could mean you're being just as creative as producing a ton of stuff. So again, maybe put a, the brakes on any kind of maximization of really anything, especially creativity, and just try to find a place where you can be decently creative and be a normal human being. So uh, without further ado, I do wanna share my own creative space. Again, this has some benefits and some drawbacks to this specific space that I'll try to touch on. Um, so without further ado, let's check it out. All right, hey everyone, welcome to my creative space. Of course, we're starting with the most recognizable part of my creative space, which is the part that I often use as the background for my videos. Um, and this is really a section of the room. This is just a guest bedroom that I have uh, that used to be a uh, work from home space. And so I decorated it to make me feel happy and make it feel nice to work from home. Um, but this is also a functional space. So it, it's intended to be you know, a decorative environment, but also fully utilizing the space as best as possible. So we have a, a nightstand here that has been repurposed to be sort of a junk drawer of chargers and cables, um, adapters, tools, you know, anything I might need in, you know, sort of the photography realm is contained within those uh, sacred drawers. And then we also have a shelf here, uh, which has different photography equipment. It's got some lenses, some cameras. Um, it has all of my film negatives, contracts that I've signed. It even has um, different types of construction paper and interesting you know, types of paper that I have found uh, that I use for some of the photos that, that I uh, create with candy. And then even, you know, on this top level, you know, I needed a place to be able to put the Pentax. I'm using this camera probably almost every day, um, at the very least every other day. And so it doesn't make sense to completely disassemble this, put it in a bag and, and put it in the closet every day. So for better or for worse, this is sort of the spot for the Pentax to be so that it is a nice decoration but that it's so easy, I can just pick it up and start working. I don't have to assemble everything. So that's kind of where this lives and so serves that dual purpose. Um, you know, we've got hats that I wear. They happen to be the most interesting ones that I have that I put on display. I've got some cameras that I shoot with. This is my first ever Instax camera. Um, and then we have this desk space. Used to be part of my work from home setup. That's somewhere else now but this serves as a great spot to kind of do some staging. If I need to set candy out, get paper out, you know, pull out extra camera gear, I have sort of a space that can be messy that's away from where I'm shooting. Um, and then I, I had a bunch of Instax pictures and I've made a few of these, but I basically made like a, a picture collage, maybe you could call this, of just all the different Instax that I've shot, uh, you know, parties I've been to, friends I've hung out with, places I've gone, things I've seen, you know, I just put them all together and it's nice to be able to look at them all the time. And I have quite a few of these throughout the apartment. Um, and then I also have some shelves here. Um, so I've got my grandfather's camera, his uh, old film camera. 
he's a big photographer uh, type of guy. And so nice to kind of have that heritage there. And I also have my uh, Polaroid camera. This was my family's Polaroid camera. So my brother and I use this a lot, but this is probably my first ever camera that I ever used and still have to this day. And it actually still works. I used to shoot with it a lot, but then I got into the Instax stuff and I just felt like the image quality was better and uh, a little bit more worth it for the money that you're spending. But yeah, that's basically this back area here that you see in all of the videos. Uh, and then we have the other side of the room, which is more the production side. So we have the workstation, we have the camera that we use to record YouTube videos, and then we have the micro studio as I call it. Um, it's a really small space, but I am really grateful to have any space at all. Um, but we'll kind of start over here. We've got our uh, space that we can do photo editing, video editing, creative, uh, you know, idea generation, submit to galleries, you know, all the kinds of stuff that you might do um, outside of the actual photography, you know, the planning, everything like that happens in this space. Um, pretty straightforward. It's just a dual monitor setup. Uh, we have our production computer here. I don't know what you guys might want to know about that, but if you have any questions about my computer, you can throw them down in the comments below. Um, and then this is also a space. I have some lights here. This is typically where um, I'll record any kind of video element where I'm like working in Lightroom or Photoshop or anything like that. I'll use this camera to record those types of videos. And that's just a Sony A5100. The camera I use for filming YouTube is a Sony A6400. Um, definitely great image quality, great autofocus, not the best color science, and it does lack IBIS. So it's a little bit limited there, but it's hard to find a good replacement for it because it is uh, just a really solid, dependable camera. So I haven't felt the strong urge to uh, try to find something better. Um, one drawback to this space is that I do also use it for work from home. So my laptop for work plugs right in here and that allows me to then use this uh, fun kind of gaming almost looking switch to switch it from my editing computer over to my laptop and that converts the monitors over to the laptop feed. Same with the uh, keyboard and mouse. Um, but the drawback here is that you know, if you've just spent eight hours working from home in this space and then you unplug your laptop and now you're going to try to spend two, four, you know, six hours editing photos or video or being creative, it can be really hard to do that when you're not physically changing location. You're staying in the exact same seat that you just spent eight hours in. So that is a drawback of having this all tied into one. But the benefit is that I don't have a lot of space here. And so not having a whole separate, you know, computer setup allows me to have a space like this where I can set up a, a, a micro studio or where this area doesn't get so crowded and become, you know, sort of unfilmable because it's messy from work. So that is a, a significant drawback, but you know, we, we do the best we can. This space does work really well for creativity. Um, because it is, it does have a lot of space on the desk, has a lot of things that I can use. You know, it's got wireless charger. It's got a nice clock here that's easy to see how long I've been working on things. It's even got this outlet attached to the desk so I can charge things or test out new camera gear. Um, it is also a standing desk and that allows me to be able to get out of the seat sometimes and just stand up and, and do some work. And then we also do have um, wireless headphones and we have a Electro Voice RE320 microphone. Uh, you have heard this microphone, any of the narrations that I've done, um, or also when I'm sitting and I'm, you know, doing like a, a Lightroom tutorial or something, this is the microphone I'm talking in. I am also hoping to do some live streams in the future and kind of just have some Q and A's or some hangouts with all of you 
and I'll be using this mic for those events. And then of course, last but not least, the Micro Studio. You guys have seen me talk about this before in some other videos, but this is just a dedicated space that I have for setting up backdrops and setting up lighting uh, and being able to do my candy art. And this is really nice, even though it is small and there are a lot of limitations here, just having a space that I can set my work, you know, set it up and work on it. And if I run into a blocker or if I'm not feeling inspired, I can leave it all set up and come back to it later and not have to tear it all down and, and start over. I can pause, which is really nice to be able to have. Limitations for this space, obviously lighting can be hard to really properly set up here because there's just not a lot of room to do that. Um, and then also physically interacting with this space can be a little bit challenging because there's not a lot of room to spread out. But um, I do have this step ladder, one of my prized possessions. Uh, that's how you know you're getting old. Your, your prized possession is a step ladder, but that lets me get up nice and high to photograph the candy. I've got a, a nice big light here that I use to uh, give me enough light to compose shots, to autofocus on the candy properly. And then really the majority of the light, probably 95%, if not more, is coming from this flash, which is typically set up somewhere, you know, kind of over here uh, in the room. So that's the space, uh, not super, super large, but it does meet my current need. And it feels nice to be in here. It definitely puts me into a creative mindset and uh, yeah. All right, so that is my creative space. And again, you know, partially this is born out of this is the space that is available to me. It might not be the space I would pick if I could pick anything, but it is what I have available. And I am super grateful to be able to have even this because there were times in my life where I did not have even this type of space to be able to do what I do. But there are some drawbacks here. It is a small space. And also I am working from home in this same space that I'm then trying to be, you know, creative in. And that is probably the biggest drawback. If you have the opportunity to separate your day job from the space that you're being creative in, I think you're gonna find that that has a lot of benefit to it. But ultimately, if it's the only space that you have, you just have to be able to roll with that and find some way to be able to separate yourself mentally from work once it's time to unplug and be creative. So that is one drawback here, but I think I do a pretty decent job of being able to manage the difference between daytime work and creative time work. So that is my space. I'd love to hear what your creative spaces are, how you, uh, you know, benefit from those spaces, if there's any drawbacks to using those spaces. And uh, if you did enjoy this video, do give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button, and that'll keep you in the know for when the next video drops. But for now, I'm Colton. I'll see you in the next one.